New Moves Advanced Wheelchair Skills is a general guide to the manual skills necessary in gaining access to your community. As you practice the general techniques demonstrated in this program and begin to explore the range of your abilities, you will learn to adapt these skills to your own style and with patience and practice make them your own. Begin by making the chair suitable to your own needs. Be aware of its performance characteristics, those features and adjustments that will allow you to get the most out of your chair, your skills, and your efforts. Once out in the community, you will face a variety of barriers, so you will also need to be aware of your surroundings. Plan your routes ahead of time, and when you confront an obstacle, problem solve. Think and examine the details to determine your best possible approach. You will want to start your practice with some assistance. Work with your health care professional and later with a friend until you have developed your technique and your confidence. Initially, for safety, you may choose to wear a lap belt to keep you from being separated from your chair. Though a curb cut implies accessibility, it still requires careful examination. Assess the grade or degree of incline of both the curb cut and the adjoining street. Also, carefully examine all surfaces for anything that might hamper the chair's progress, from small lips and edges to the placement of a storm drain. To go up a curb cut, timing and momentum are key for ease in gaining the top of the cut. Approach the curb cut squarely to prevent unnecessary jarring or torque. Control your speed, being neither too fast or too slow. You want to gain the top of the cut with minimal effort and maximum control. Generally, with greater degree and length of incline, more speed is necessary. Just prior to entry, your arm should be in the power stroke position at approximately 10 o'clock. This is a matter of timing. Give a hard pop to raise the front casters to ensure not scraping the foot plates. Remember, on some curb cuts, without enough elevation, you run the risk of underpopping, that is, catching your foot plates on the steeper inclines or casters on protruding edges. When strength and endurance is at issue for any disability level, even the small incline of a curb cut may require the use of grade aids. Grade aids, or hill holders, will keep the chair from rolling backward between strokes. When going down a curb cut or driveway, use front end elevation, or wheelie, as you approach the end of the cut. Although not always necessary, this will prevent hitting your foot plates on the incline of the street, as well as provide additional force to ascend the crown of the road. A projection rim user will generally not elevate the front casters coming down a curb cut. If a street slope requires elevation to clear the footrests, a complete stop may be necessary, after which the front end is popped up to clear. Height is the main consideration when accessing a curb. Start with smaller curbs, working up in height with increased confidence and skill. Look also at the approach. Is it uphill or down? Be aware of surface types and look for any irregularities. As with the curb cut, timing and momentum are key, especially with increased curb height. Your approach is again square, with your arms in the power stroke position just before accessing the curb. While maintaining your forward momentum, again neither too fast or slow, give a quick forceful pop elevating the front end so that the casters just clear the curb. Be careful not to tip too far back, risking overpopping and the possibility of falling backward out of your chair. Continue the stroke from the power position with a hard push up onto the curb. Some forward body English will assist with the final momentum. Another method of accessing a curb is using a fixed stationary object. After elevating the front casters onto the curb, pull up with one arm while pushing from a power position with the other. 
Going down a curb is more a process of control. As you approach the curb edge squarely, slow or stop, and pop up the front end onto a wheelie. Maintain the elevation as you control the descent of tires by adding slowing pressure to the tire and rims. Ideally, all tires should contact the ground at the same time. Initially, to go down a high curb, you may choose the backward approach, which allows more control. Square your tires with the curb's edge. Lean and reach forward, pulling back evenly on the rims. Allow the rear tires to drop to the ground, controlling the descent. For the lower quadriplegic friction rim user, going off a curb requires more control and a different grip. Slow and pop up into a wheelie just prior to rolling off the curb. Roll hands under to a slowing grip and ease your descent. The projection rim user and those not skilled in the wheelie technique can use a more methodical step-by-step -step approach. To go up, square your front casters up close to the curb. Reach back to projections in your power stroke position and with a quick hard stroke, elevate the front end onto the curb, bringing your rear wheels up against the curb. Roll back an inch or two for momentum. Reach back again to your power stroke position, lean forward and muscle up the curb applying equal force on rim projections. When going down a small curb in the forward position, the same methodical approach is used. Approach squarely and carefully lower the front casters. Next, follow with the rear tires. If using anti-tip bars, be careful as they can catch on the curb and pitch you forward, possibly out of your chair. Extra strength, care and control is necessary on inclines. Examine carefully the degree of incline and its length. Take into consideration the type of surface and whether or not there are handrails for support. Be sure your strength and endurance are up to the task, especially on the longer inclines. You may choose, at least initially, to use grade aids. Appropriate gloves are recommended for wheelchair use generally, but especially coming down inclines where friction can build up heat against your hands. When going up an incline, reach back to power stroke position and give quick, hard forward strokes, especially when not using grade aids. Remember, it's important to lean forward to counterbalance the chair's tendency to tip back. Be careful if using high mount wheel locks. They can get in the way of your stroke, causing you to jam your thumb. Going down an incline becomes a matter of speed maintenance and control. One method is using a controlled wheelie. The wheelie is optional for those who are still learning this skill. As you begin your descent, elevate your front end, maintaining the wheelie for the length of the incline. Maintain speed control and balance by applying slowing pressure on the tires and hand rims. Too much pressure and the front end will come down. A quadriplegic, because of greater limitations due to disability, is required to use even better judgment in the evaluation of inclines. Judgment in relation to an individual's strength and endurance. To go straight up an incline, forward lean and quick short strokes are required. Grade aids, at least initially, become more than a convenience. Or, where space permits, you may choose to lessen the degree of incline with the slalom approach, crossing back and forth across the incline. Coming down an incline, use a slowing grip. An angled or staggered release of grip may be necessary to control descent. Again, where space permits, use the slalom approach. Turns are accomplished by applying slowing pressure to the tire or hand rim in the direction of the turn. 
you may choose to use your wheel locks instead of hand pressure to save wear and tear on your hands and gloves. Crossing a street is dealing with both curbs and curb cuts, the incline to the street crown, and traffic and congestion. Be aware of the walk cycle and the timing required. And most important, be sure that people in cars see you. Sidewalks slant toward the street for drainage, so you are pushing across an extended incline, working your downhill arm harder. When traveling any distance on a sidewalk, choose the side of the street which puts your dominant arm down toward the street. This allows your stronger arm to do the hard work. The different surfaces you cross require different amounts of caution, energy, and endurance. Some surfaces offer little resistance, where others are impassable. Most will offer a variety of irregularities of which you will have to be aware, especially when combined with other obstacles, such as an incline. An awareness of surfaces is also important for those times you find yourself out of your chair, either by choice or accident, and have to transfer back in. For ease of travel over uneven surfaces or rough terrain, elevate the front casters in a dynamic wheelie. When assessing a door, consider its width, weight, and approach. Consider also the type of handle, the amount of traffic, and the direction the door opens. You should also be prepared to deal with an unknown situation beyond the door. All these elements are combined in a multitude of different ways that will make every situation unique. So problem solving and skill integration are essential. Residential doors can provide you with unique challenges. Your solutions often have to be creative. Screen doors, front steps, and door sills are a few of the difficulties you will face. Part of integrating skills is making use of stationary objects to give you the necessary leverage to get up a step or through a door. A heavy institutional door that opens toward you with a push-button handle can prove especially difficult for the quadriplegic chair user. Chair positioning is important as proper position allows for leverage, grip access, and door clearance. Position your chair at a slight angle with your back to the door. Apply wheel locks for stability. With limitation of grip, use two hands to work the door release. Place your free hand under the opposing rim for leverage. Use your footrest to further prop and open the door, allowing you to pivot through. To maneuver means working with your chair in a confining or limiting situation. These situations, ranging from narrow halls to restrooms and elevators, will be a challenge to your problem-solving ability. Again, emphasis is on skill integration and creative judgment. Assess the restrictions of space in the area you'll be entering. What problems will doors offer? Can you open them or close them behind you? Can you creatively use your chair? What obstacles will you need to maneuver around? Can you use stationary objects for support and maneuvering? And will a lateral hop help to better shift your chair's position? 
An advanced skill, lateral movement requires strength, grip, and an ability to shift weight. To practice this skill, grip the hand rims firmly and with a quick, forceful motion, pull up while at the same time lifting and shifting your weight, sliding the chair under you to either the left or right. This should be accomplished as one fluid motion causing your chair to hop slide in the chosen direction. It may take several lateral shifts to cover a small distance. Stairs and steps are a difficult barrier to overcome and should be considered an advanced skill that, for many users, especially the new, will require assistance. As a new user in the community, you should first look for a means to bypass stairs when possible. Many places provide ramps or elevators. If approaching stairs, either with or without assistance, consider the number of steps the tread depth, and stair height. Check the condition of the handrail. Give it a shake. Is it solid? Where does it begin and end? Will you have to release your grip at any point? When going up, you should have two persons providing assistance. Back your chair to the base of the steps. The hand grips should be checked to be sure they won't slip. The first person will be above and behind you lifting. The second person will be below, at your feet, supporting the lift and guarding against the possibility of the first person losing their grip. The grip should be on a fixed part of the frame and not on the removable footrest. With a railing, the user can assist by reaching back and gripping the rail and reaching across and gripping the tire and rim. Pulling up is a married approach between the user pulling up on the rail and tire and with those assisting the lift. When going down, you may need only one person to help, depending on that person's strength and your ability to assist. Approach the steps backward, squaring off tires against the edge of the step. Your hand closest to the railing reaches back and grips the rail, while the other hand is on the tire, keeping the chair going down the stairs evenly. With a railing, your helper will provide primary support, allowing you to do most of the work. The degree to which you can assist will depend on your muscle function, grip, and physical condition. The unassisted approach is an advanced community skill beyond the expectations of many users. It requires a more careful assessment of the situation, as well as a strong grip and a good deal of strength. Because of the inherent risks, you should practice this skill, as others, with a spotter. Steps low enough in height, few in number, and having great enough depth can be accessed both in a forward and backward position. These approaches are demonstrated not so much as a recommended method, but as an example of what can be done. Going down a few steps in a forward approach is an easier process, requiring more control and confidence than strength. Approach the top of the steps squarely, and with a controlled front-end elevation or wheelie, lower the chair down the steps much as you would off a curb. Most modern buses are equipped with elevating platforms that make wheelchair access, if not quick, at least relatively easy. Once lowered, back up onto the platform. It may be necessary to use the railing to pull yourself up. The driver will then raise the platform to the level of entry. Back in, using stationary posts and rails to assist. Most buses have wheelchair stations or special seats that fold up providing space for a wheelchair. Once situated, apply your wheel locks, then you or the driver will secure your chair with a strap or clamp. For safety, it is recommended that you use a lap belt while the bus is in motion and hold on to a rail for support. To exit, the process is reversed. Be sure to exit at an accessible location. 
You should contact your local transit district for access information in your area. Putting your skills to work in the community is not a short-term learning process. Every day will present variations on themes, challenging you to think and adapt your skills. As you gain an experience and confidence, what at first was difficult becomes commonplace. What seemed impossible is just another challenge. But you have to begin.